How to create a website with the 2023 theme from WordPress? Let's get started. What's up everybody, my name is David. I hope you're having a great day. So in this tutorial video, I'm gonna walk you through step one to step done on how to create a beautiful, responsive, high converting website using the 2023 theme. I would describe this theme as sort of like a blank slate minimalistic theme that's really designed to take full advantage of all the different block features that WordPress has to offer. I'm going to walk you through everything that you need to know to get started. I'm going to show you how to get a domain name at a domain name register, how to get a web hosting account, how to install WordPress, and then design your website with the 2023 theme. Like always, make sure to check the links in the description for timestamps and resources mentioned in this video. So let's get started. Okay, so this is the website I'm going to show you how to make. So it's good for any type of like informational website or maybe a small business website, whatever. So over here, I'm gonna show you how to add in a logo, how to add in a menu item over there, then how to add in this call to action section right there with a button where you can have something like request a quote, consultation, download our free guide, watch my masterclass, something like that. Then how to add in different sections on the homepage. So like maybe like a little welcome message your blog role, for example, some type of call to action down here to get people to onboard them to the website in some way. Then over here with the footer, how to properly design a footer with the logo, social media links, copyright, then a sub menu for different things that you want to link to how to custom design your individual pages to your liking. So maybe you wanna have a custom design for your individual pages like the about page, contact page, resources. I'll show you how to do that. As well as how to set up your blog post pages. So how to have like maybe a call to action at the very top over here, how to custom design your individual blog posts so they look good with a nice big feature image at the very top if you want and how to set up the title and add yourself in as the author and add in the category for the blog post and so forth. Anyways, let's get started. Okay, so step one in creating a WordPress website is to get a domain name. And I highly suggest using Namecheap as your domain name registrar. They are the service that I use to manage all of my domain names simply because you get the best price for registering any type of .com, which is the domain extension I do suggest you get when creating a website. Now Namecheap often runs promotions like you see down here for .coms at a great price point. So always make sure to check underneath this. Anyways, to register a domain name is very simple. You just type in the domain name that you want to register. Okay, so next it will tell you whether or not your domain name is available so you can register it. If it's not available, that means you need to click here and type in a different word combination. If it is available, then you can click over here to add it to cart. And let's go ahead and click on checkout. And there we go. So now we have our domain name registration. We have domain name privacy, which is free forever. Domain name privacy is important because you have to submit accurate information when registering a domain name, like your name, email, address, phone number. And so domain name privacy just keeps all of that information private. And over here, you can register for one year up to 10 years. So I definitely recommend registering for like a few years. Like if you're really sure of this domain name you and you want to keep it for a long time, definitely consider registering for five, six, seven years because that's how you lock in a very low price. So we navigate over here for one year. It's $10 and it renews at this rate right here. And so that's why you want to register for a longer period of time because then you can just lock in that low price point for a longer period of time. If that makes any sense, Anyways, when you're ready, click on confirm order. And finally, you'll need to create a Namecheap account in order to submit payment. If you already have a Namecheap account for some reason, simply log in and then submit payment with a credit card or PayPal. Next, we need to get a web hosting account. So a web hosting account is simply you renting a piece of a server. So your website's available 24 seven. Now my go-to web host for any type of beginner is DreamHost. Now DreamHost is one of only two recommended web hosts from WordPress, and I really like them. Great price point, great hosting, good support. Now to get started is simple. You click on the big blue get started button. Now over here, you see a few different plans. So you have shared, DreamPress, and VPS. We wanna use the shared plan over here, and I definitely recommend the unlimited plan because with shared starter, you get one website, but with shared unlimited, you get unlimited websites. And DreamPress is made for high traffic websites, so you can always upgrade to DreamPress when it makes sense. But if you're just starting out, shared unlimited is more than enough. 
Anyways, when you're ready to move forward, click on sign up now. All right, so now we can sign up for shared hosting over here. So you can choose a domain name later, register a new domain name, or I already have a domain name. We're going to be using I already have a domain name because we got our domain name at Namecheap. But you can register a domain name through DreamHost if you want, and it is free for the first year, but then it renews at $20 every year after that, which is why I like Namecheap because it's a lower price point to get started with. So totally up to you. If you want a free domain name for the first year, you can register a domain name through them. But again, it's going to be a higher renewal cost long term. So anyways, let's move forward. I'm going to click on I already have a domain name over here and I'm going to type in the domain name that I registered at Namecheap. And let's click on assign. And we're on the secure checkout page now. So you can just submit payment. I'm not going to insult your intelligence and tell you how to buy something on the line. So just submit your credit card or PayPal. And over here, you can either choose monthly, yearly, or for three years up front. Totally up to you. I probably would just go with a yearly plan right there. And then due today is a very affordable $35. Like that's tough to beat. If you do three years, then it's $142. So I personally think the yearly plan is the best to get started with. But again, totally up to you. Make your own decision. Now over here, you have Dream Shield Protection, Toolkit, Google Workspace. You don't need to check these at this time. If you want to purchase these later, you can. All right. So once you submit payment, it should say order completed successfully. And now you have your email and then just set a password so you can log into your DreamHost accounts. Welcome to your dashboard from DreamHost. Now it's time to install WordPress and set up our website and DreamHost makes this incredibly easy to do. So first thing, click over here where it says websites and then click on manage websites. Now this website that you see right here is the primary domain name on the account. If you bought your domain name through DreamHost, everything is set up correctly. If you bought your domain name through Namecheap, like I recommend in this tutorial video, then you will have to set name servers. It doesn't take that long. It's very easy and I'll show you what to do in just a moment. And now to add in additional websites to your hosting account, you can click over here to add in websites. So let's set our name servers. So first things first, log into your domain name register. In this example, we're using Namecheap and you have to set the name servers. So right down here, we see something that says name servers and it's currently set to Namecheap basic DNS. We need to change this to custom DNS. Now we have name server one, name server two. So we need to get this information and we can get this information from our DreamHost account. So click on manage over here. And up top here, you'll see something that says DNS. Let's click on that. And then right here, use these name servers. So currently the name servers over here are the Namecheap name servers. So we just need to copy and paste these items right here into here. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so once you've added it in, make sure to click on the little green check mark. And there you go. So it says it may take up to 48 hours to take effect. I've honestly never seen it take that long. It's usually like 20 minutes max. So everything will start propagating. So now we can go ahead and install WordPress. So let's click over here back to websites and then click on install WordPress. Okay, so on our start WordPress installation page, we can select domain name, which is correct. Then you can specify path. Now, I definitely suggest leaving this blank because if you type in something like blog, what's going to happen is that WordPress is going to be installed only on domain slash blog and the root domain name, which is in this example, vloghow.com, WordPress won't be installed. We want WordPress to be installed on the root domain name. So leave that blank then automatically create a database. Yep, that is correct. So let's click on next. And then DreamHost provides a very helpful guided WordPress installation depending on what you're doing. So you have this tutorial video to follow. So I'm going to select none. And finally, you have two recommended plugins, one for WP Supercache and one for DreamHost panel login. I definitely recommend keeping the DreamHost panel login so you can log in from your DreamHost panel. And WP Supercache is useful as a caching plugin, so I will keep that as well. Anyways, click on install. And installing WordPress is as simple as that. Now it takes a few minutes, so just wait for the installation to finish. Fantastic. So WordPress has been successfully installed on your website. So because we installed the DreamHost plugin to allow us to log in from our DreamHost dashboard, to log into our website is very easy. All we have to do is click on the admin auto login button right there and welcome to WordPress.
Now it's time to adjust some backend settings for our website before we begin designing everything. So right up top here, you see a, we have an auto-generated password for our accounts. Would you like to change it? We're going to click on a yes, I would. So let's navigate to the profile page. So right now we're over at users and profile. Now over here is where you can add in different users for your websites. So the way it's set up right now is we have the nickname right here and display the nickname as this. You cannot change the username. So this is the username for the account. Yours will be unique, but you can add in your name. So I'll put in David right there and then nickname required. So we can get rid of that. I could put in David and then we can display our name as David. So that means like when you publish a blog post, it will say written by David, not written by vlog how 26, whatever. Then we have our email right down there and then we can set a new password if you want. So I'll take this password and I'll just store it over here for example purposes. So you can put in a password that you want. And so if you want to log into your website directly, then you'll be using this password and your email or you can just log into your DreamHost account and log in as needed. When you're all set, make sure to click the update profile button. Great, so now let's navigate over to our plugins. So we have a WP Super Cache enabled. Let's go ahead and deactivate that right now because we're going to be editing and designing our website so we don't want any caching going on. And we are going to have to install a few additional plugins. So let's get started. So first off, click on add new. And next we wanna type in something called rank math and hit enter and go ahead and install Rank Math SEO. What this is, is an SEO plugin that allows you to have a little bit more control over the metadata of your blog posts and pages and a bunch of different helpful features for on-page SEO. Go ahead and click on Activate. Now, Rank Math will present you an onboarding process if you wanna go through this. I'm gonna click on Skip Now. And let's navigate down here and let's click on Return to Dashboard. So you can fill out this out later if you want, but I'm gonna to return to dashboard. I'm going to be using Rank Math in this tutorial video to set everything up properly anyways. Now the next plugin we want to install is called Stackable and Stackable is my favorite block building plugin. So it just adds in a bunch of different blocks that you can use within your blog post pages and overall site design. So type in Stackable, Stackable, there we go, hit enter. And right here, Stackable Page Builder Gutenberg Blocks. Go ahead and install now. And over here, it says never miss an important update. We can just go ahead and click on skip. And that is it. So now let's navigate back over to plugins. Now we should have Rank Math SEO and Stackable activated. And we can go ahead and delete Akismet. And we can also delete Hello Dolly. Next up, we need to make sure our WordPress theme is installed. So in this tutorial video, we're using the 2023 theme from WordPress. So navigate over here to Appearance, then click on Themes. So we should have a few different themes installed. We have the 2023, 2022, and 2021. We can also add in additional themes as we want, but we're going to be using this theme right here, the 2023 theme. So we can go ahead and delete these other two themes. To do so, simply click on the theme and then click on delete. And that is it. So now we're ready to design our website. How to log in to your WordPress website. So if you have DreamHost, all you have to do is log into your DreamHost account and then click on websites. You can log into your account that way. If you want to log in directly to your website, the way you do it is to navigate to your website, type in slash WP admin. And once you do that, you'll be presented with the admin login page. And over here, you enter in your username or your email address and the password for the account. All right, so let's get started designing our website. So I wanna lead off with just a quick feature tour of WordPress if you're completely new to full site editing and how this all works. So if we navigate back to our dashboard over here, we can click on appearance and then you click on the editor. And then what will happen is that the editor will open up which allows you to design your website. There we go. Okay, so first off, you can click on your site and it takes up the entire space over here so you can begin editing. To edit, it works by way of a block builder. So you can click on a block over here and then you can edit and adjust the block as you want. 
Now you have a few things up top here in the menu or the navigation bar, I should say. And the first thing is the styles. So the styles are for the entire website. Okay, so just be careful. If you navigate to that, the little circle, that's for the entire website. Now over here, what's very helpful about this theme is that you can click over here to browse styles. Then you can click on pre-made styles with text and graphics already built in if you want. So again, you can just play around with this on your own time. I just want you to know that this exists. Now, if we navigate back over here, I'm going to leave everything on default. Now, when you click on a block, make sure to click on the settings. In the settings right here, this adjusts the block that you have selected, okay? So if you're like, how do I adjust something specific? You click it, then you click over here to the settings, then you click over here for the block, okay? Because this is the block, and these features right here edit the block. In the same issue, you have the settings and you have the design and styles over here. So the styles, this affects this particular block and so forth. And it's really that simple. Now to navigate back to where we were, we just click on the WordPress logo and then boom, this opens up over here. So now, right now we're over here in design and you have your navigation, styles, pages, templates, and patterns. So navigation is for the primary menu at the top right there. So it's back out of that. And that's where you can adjust your uh, navigation as you want. Styles over here, same thing as before that I just showed you over there. It's just another way to access it. Pages over here. So we have the home page, privacy page, sample page. So these we only have three pages on our site at this time. So you can edit and adjust the pages individually from this section right there. And then we have templates over here. Templates are for a blog archive or blog alternative alternative blog home index page 404 pages search result so before you get overwhelmed we click over here what's that say at the top it says blog home that's the page you're editing so we click over here blog home so this is the template that we are adjusting okay so that's kind of how it works so you can just click over here to navigate to different sections on your website you want to navigate to and edit as you like so you can navigate using this feature over here then patterns down there so patterns are patterns for things like your header your footer general and whatnot so i like to navigate to the site and kind of edit everything from here using this feature instead of the uh, section over here. So totally up to you for your workflow, but I'm gonna show you how I work with the websites. Let's edit and adjust our header section. So go ahead and click into the site design, mouse over this top section where you see how it's highlighted purple, click on it, you now have the header section selected. So you have a few different options here. You can click on edit and this will allow you to edit the header section manually, or you can click over here for the little plus sign and that allows you to add in different blocks. What I want you to do is click on the three dots right there, then navigate down here to where it says replace header. And these are pre-made designs that you can just add into your site and they look great. My personal favorites are this one right here, the header inside full with background image. Say that three times fast. And this one right here, full with header with a hero image. There we go. Okay, so let's click on that and let it load. And then we can just edit and adjust this template as it is. Now, if you wanna change it, just make sure to click on the purple section. See how it's highlighted purple? Click on that, then click on this, the dots again, then replace full width header. Now, in this tutorial video, I'm going to be using this one right there, the header inside full width and background image. And it's really that simple to swap out the header section for a pre-made template that looks great. Now, let's change a few things with our header section. So if we click over here, you're like, what's this big blue box thing? So if we navigate over here, it'll tell you what it is. It's a spacer. So a spacer with regards to design is just an element that you can add in to give some breathing room to different elements on the web page. So a spacer is good for just giving a little bit more padding and space between maybe like the logo and then like the site title, things like that. So we're gonna leave this as is for now. And also you can just expand this down to expand the hero image in the background. Now, let me just back out of this. So right up top here, you have the undo button as well. So if you ever wanna just <laughs> undo the changes that you made, you can just click on that elements. Now, how do we adjust the image in the background? How do we do that? So first off, we have the header section right there. We need to really click off to a different section. Okay, so we don't wanna click on the spacer. We don't want to click on the he the menu header section. You need to click off to the little left right there. Now you can replace it with an image 
that you want. So I'm gonna go click over here to replace, open media library, and I'm gonna drag and drop in my own hero image. All right, so there's my hero image that I added into the background. You have your alt text right there. Alt text is to describe the image to search engines and for devices where the image doesn't load properly. So alt text is pretty important, particularly within blog posts. Uh, otherwise, not that important. Anyways, I have it selected and I'm going to click on select. Okay, so we added in our hero image successfully. Now I know what you're going to ask. You're like, David, this is super dark. I can't see it. Like, how do I change this? All right, so first things first, don't click on this where you have the whole purple section selected because now you're editing the header. You don't want to do that. So click off that. Make sure the mouse all the way over to the left-hand side so you're not selecting the header. So I clicked over here, and now I can adjust the image, okay? Now the first thing you need to do is navigate over here to your settings. Like I told you in the very beginning, the settings, this adjusts this particular block. So now I'm adjusting this particular block with the background image. You have two dials, you have your settings, and then you have your styles over here. So your settings, you can have it be fixed background, repeated background, left and right, or left and top padding. You can adjust as you want. And then over here, we have our styles. Now we have the text and overlay and the overlay opacity. So we increase that, makes it darker, bring it down, makes it lighter. Then you can change the overlay color. So you wanna change the overlay from being like a dark text to a white text, whatever. You can play around with the site design as you see fit, but that's how you adjust things. So anyways, I'm gonna leave it as is. Let's X out of this and let's click on save and then click on save again. And we are good to go. So if we take a step back and look at our site design, one thing you're going to notice is that at the very top, we have this white line, this white padding, and you're gonna be like, well, how do I get rid of that? Because it doesn't look good. I want the entire image to take up the very top of the header section. Very simple. So make sure you have the header section selected. And then you want to click on your styles over here. And then you want to click on layouts. Once you click on layout, you have something called padding. We have a little bit of padding at the top. But for whatever reason, this is how it's set up by default. We can just minimize the padding. And it is as simple as that. Click on save. Click on save again, and that is it. Editing and adjusting our menu items. So up top here is what I call the menu. In WordPress, it's called the navigation. So we have one page up top here. So I want to show you how to add in different things to your navigation or menu item, whatever you want to call it. Now, let's navigate back to our WordPress dashboard. Click on pages. Click on all pages. You're going to see two items right here. We have a privacy policy that is not published yet, and we have a sample page. And that's why we have sample page there because all the pages that you publish automatically get added to your navigation, which I quite like, but you can remove things as you add them as well. So let me go ahead and add in a few additional pages. Okay, so I went ahead and added about blog content resources, sample page, and I went ahead and published the privacy policy. So to add in a page to your site is very simple. All you have to do is click on add page over here, and then the page will open up. You give it a title, so I can give it a title as an example, and then I can click on publish. One thing you wanna make sure is that the URL matches the title pretty closely. Anyways, let's navigate back to our dashboard over here. And let me navigate back over here to pages. All right, so there we go. So let's take a quick look at the site and let's reload it. All right, so now I have a bunch of menu items added to the navigation, but one thing I don't want is I don't want privacy policy and I don't want sample page. So sample page, we can just delete that. So to delete anything, you click on trash. And that is it. Now it's been added to your trash and you can go ahead and delete it further if you want. So you can click on trash and then empty the trash and then it's really gone. But trash is useful because you can restore things that you accidentally delete or you want to come back to whatever. So anyways, let's take a look at the site now and sample page is gone. But what about privacy policy? I don't want to trash the privacy policy. I need that. But I want the privacy policy to be like a link in the footer down here, not the primary navigation. To do that, we need to edit the menu. So navigate back to your full site editor and click into the site design, click on the menu item section, kind of click between the two items right there. And now we want to click on edit. And next you'll have to click away and then click on the item again and then click on edit again. 
Now it'll pop up with this saying the menu is automatically kept in sync with the pages on your site. So what does that mean? So if you click over here, you'll see something that says page list. So that's what's powering this. So everything that whenever you add a page to your WordPress website, it automatically adds it to the menu item. Out of convenience, it could be a little bit annoying over time. So you can get rid of this and just add in menu items manually, but I do like having the page list. Anyways, I'm going to leave it as is. I'm going to click on edit and I'm going to click on edit over here. And now you can just remove things as you want. So I'll click over here for the privacy policy, click on the little buttons over there, then click on delete. And it's as simple as that. Now over here, if you click on the plus sign, you can add in additional links to other pages that you want or other like an offsite link like Facebook or YouTube. Uh, and so forth. So to do that is very simple. So you can type in just something like blog. We'll say, I don't know, I'll type in book, type in book over here, just hit enter. That's all you gotta do is type it in, hit enter. And now we have a menu item that says book, click on the menu item again. And then you wanna navigate right over here where it says link, click on link. Now click on the pencil icon. Now the text is book and the link is book. Like, well, that's not a link. <laughs> so you need to add in a specific URL. So I can type in like facebook.com or book.com, whatever I want to do, whatever I want to link out. And so that's what you need to do right over here. So if I type in book.com, I'll just click on save, but click on it again, click on the menu item, click on the pencil icon, open up advanced. And now whenever you have a off site link, you want to open it in a new tab. So if you are linking to some type of like social media profile or an Amazon product or a product you have on some type of platform, whatever, whatever, make sure it opens in a new tab. And it's really that simple to edit and adjust your menu. So let me go ahead and just delete this right there. And I'll keep it as is about blog contact resources. That looks good. Let's click on save and click on save again. And let's take a quick look at our websites. And there we go. Looks great. How to create a drop down with your navigation menu items, as well as how to reorder things. So let me just click into the site design and let me click over here again. Now, another way to change things is just to click on the menu item itself and then click over here, delete and so forth. And if you want to bold this, the best way I found is just to highlight the text manually itself and then just click on B to bold and just do that individually for your menu items. So there you go. Now, if we want to make a drop down, we can do that pretty easily. So we click over here for drop or sorry, navigation. Now we have our navigation right here about blog contact. So over here we can remove about so you can delete pages over here from this element right there. And you can also create drop downs using this. So as you add in additional pages, all you have to do is click on the menu item and then highlight it and then drag it and then move it off to the right. And there we go. So see how it now has a, like, a little drop down arrow. We click on that and expand it and we want to move that and we want to get just make it a normal menu item. We can just remove this like this, just drag it away and put it underneath there. Simple as that. And that's kind of how you change things around. Now, if you want to reorganize everything, like maybe I want it to be uh, blog as the first menu item, I click over here and you can literally just drag it above it drag it above about and there you go switch things around and that's really all you need to know for adjusting the menu item and one little tip with design and drop downs you really want to keep things to like five items max for a drop down and maybe only one item as a drop down you don't want to have a massively long drop down of like 10 things seven max honestly i would use a drop down i'd have like five four items max Anyways, when you're done, click over here to review one change and then click on save and you are good to go. And finally, let me just cover some additional settings for the menu item. Now, once you select the menu item and you click settings over here, you have a couple different options. So you can change the justification, you can change the orientation and you can change the display as well. So if I click over here, for example, it turns it into a hamburger 
menu mobile means that it's only on mobile it will display the hamburger menu uh, you navigate down here to advanced then you can delete and change things and add in css as you like if you understand how to edit and change things with css if we click over here for settings here is where you can change the background text some menu text overlay some menu overlay background so if you want to play around with colors make things like uh, different sizes and bold things and so forth like if i want to change the typography make it like extra large or large whatever you do it over here and over here you can change the spacing between the menu items as well uh, so like if you notice like oh hey it's really close together how do i separate it out you can change this by navigating down here to block spacing and changing it to like a one width you can have it be fill fixed so forth so just be aware that you have a bunch of different options when you want to fine tune the way your menu item looks and acts when people visit your website adding in a logo and a favicon for your website. So if we click into the design over here, we can see a little box, that's where the logo goes. Then over here we have a tagline, just another WordPress website. Now if you're like, where is that being populated from? If you navigate over here to your settings, go to general, then you'll see that right up top there. So if you wanna delete that or whatever, change to something else, you can do so right there. So I'm just gonna delete that because I don't need a tagline for the website so let's click on save changes and there we go and so let's back out of this and let me reopen the editor again and the tagline should be gone and there we go so it's as simple as that now for the logo well you actually need to create a logo and for that i definitely recommend canva so this is canva i have a paid account over here and this is the uh, logo that I just created really quick. So the way I did this, is I just went here to create a design. Then I went to YouTube thumbnail and over here, I just added in some text. The text is league Spartan. I clicked on effects. The effects I have over here is to add in a shadow. It's really that simple. There's nothing complicated about this. You can pay for a logo designer or whatever, but definitely recommend just using Canva. If you just want to whip up something really quick and simple. So anyways, it's time to download this. So let's click on share. And then let's click on download over here. And I want to download this as a transparent background. So let's go ahead and click on download. And let's go ahead and save that right there. Very good. All right, so let me minimize this. Okay, so now let me open this up. And we want to like kind of crop in the top and the bottom. So let me click on edit picture. So use whatever tool you have to crop images. So I'm gonna click over here to crop the very top right down here. Let's navigate down there and then crop this in over here. As so, looks good. And 1,280 by 331 pixels is a pretty big logo. We don't really need it that big. So I'm just gonna go over here to resize. Again, if you upload this to your site, it'll automatically resize by itself, so no worries. But I just want file efficiency, so I want to make it a little bit smaller, probably down to like 350 or so. It's kind of like, yeah, about there. 346, that looks good. And click on OK. Let's click on Save over here. Very good. Now, one additional step I like to do is to save things as a .webp file because it is more efficient. So I'm going to go over here, Open. And I'm going to open with GIMP. GIMP is a free editor for images. And over here, we can just re-export the logo as a .webp file. All that does is just makes the file more efficient and smaller. So from a file size, but still maintains quality. So over here, let's go to export as, and then vlog how logo .webp. And let's export it that way and export that way. The only reason I do this with GIMP is because when I'm in Canva, I can't save it as a .webp file. I can only export it as a .png file. So anyways, there we go. Simple as that. Now, another additional thing you may want to create is a favicon if you want. So a favicon is like the little icon you see up top here in the web browser. See how Canva has that little C? That's a favicon. It's useful for branding purposes. So totally up to you if you want to create a favicon or not. So I created this 50 by 50 pixels, kind of small, but big enough so I can see like what I'm doing. I just selected a random image over here. You can custom design this to your liking uh, as you want. And again, same thing, click over here, download, download with a transparent background. 
So we got our favicon right there. Let me go ahead and delete this one. So you got our favicon and we got our logo. So let me open up our website over here. And it's as simple as just clicking over here, then clicking again, and then upload the fabric or upload, sorry, the logo. So let's drag and drop this over here. And that looks good. So let me click on select. And there we go. So you can adjust the size of the logo by moving these items, but it comes in at 350 pixels. So I like the way that looks, looks nice. Now, a few additional things. We can click over here. You can click on settings. Now, over here, again, click on the logo, then click on settings. Down here, it says use as a site icon. That means the site icon will be this. So site icon, favicon, it means the same thing. I don't want that because I already created a favicon. So I'm going to turn that off. And then I'm going to click on site icon settings over here. And it'll open up with this section over here. Then select site icon. So select that. And again, let's just drag and drop the favicon into place. Let's click on select. Yep, crop image, done. Click on publish. There we go. Navigate over here to the WordPress editor. Let's click on save. Click on save again. Click X out of that. And let's take a quick look. Ah, there we go. So everything is working as expected. So we have a custom logo and a favicon added to our website. Let's go ahead and add in an offer section for our website. So click on in. And the whole point of designing this section right here is to make an offer to visitors to the website. So an offer is something like request a quote, consultation, download our guide, watch this masterclass, click over here to view this blog post or this page whatever, just make an offer. Now, if I click over here, we have a spacer that comes up. And as I move the spacer down, the whole menu item up over here moves down. So I'm going to have to add in another spacer to kind of make everything work. It really depends on the size of the image that you use. So this image I'm using in the background is quite big. So this is why I'm having this little issue, but not a big deal. I'll show you how to make everything work. So step one, we need to add in an H1 title tag. All right, so click away. Now mouse over this, and now that's highlighted, click on the little plus sign over here, and then click on your heading block. Headings are like your H1, H2, H3 title tags. All web pages should have an H1 title tag because that's the title of the page. We click over here, and now type in your headings. So I'm going to type in uh, vlogging advice and guides all in one place. And that looks terrible. <laughs> so let's highlight it. And let's go ahead and bold it. And I'm going to make this white. So we click on the little A to make it white. And we'll move the little circle up. And there we go. Now let's go ahead and center this. And that looks good. So everything's a little off-centered. So if, as I move this down, this moves up and that moves down. Like I don't like this. So we need to make a duplicate box of this. So we have this selected. Click on the little dots over here, then click on duplicate. Now we have two of these, click on this one, click on the little arrow that says move down. And it's as simple as that. And now we just kind of eyeball everything to kind of make sure everything fits. So I'll push this down a little bit. I'll move this one up a little bit. And that's like, all right, that's kind of looking good. Maybe, maybe a little bit more like that. I kind of like, looks good. So we got the menu item at the top right there. And then this text is right nice and centered. Now, one thing we're missing is a button. So again, make an offer and direct people to do something. Download a guy, click on something, navigate to a page on your site, whatever. So anyways, I'm going to hit enter. Now we have another block section and I'm going to click on the plus sign and you want to add in a button. So type in button either in the search bar or if it comes up here, just click on it and then have a button where it's sign up now, download now, uh, whatever equipment guide because i'm going to be talking about vlogging so that's something i would do so let me type that in equipment guide there we go and click x away from that and now we have a button and it's off to the left over here now i want to have this button be centered now you don't click on this because this aligns the text you need to click on this item right there change item justification justify items center now if i want this text to be bold there we go. Highlight it. 
click on B, and then you can manually bold it that way. If you're not crazy about this color, which is okay, click on the block, then click on your settings up top here, then click on the design icon or the styles over there. Then here you can manually change the background color of the button. So let me X away from that. Now, if you click over here for the site styles, the styles for the entire website, and we click over here for colors, you'll see that all buttons are always going to be this like lime green color. If you just wanna have a standard button color and don't wanna to have to manually change it each and every time, you can do so right over here. So let me click X away from that. And then that's it. You can kind of play around with things over here. So you know, we click into the, the text, the H1 title tag box over there. I can adjust the size of the text as such as I like over here. Dimensions, advanced, appearance. I can make everything bold or semi-bold automatically without me having to do anything if I want. I can change the text by, uh, background color. You can play around with this on your own time, but you have a bunch of access to different settings over here. Again, just to change the look and feel of your websites. All right, and that's really it. So I'm kind of liking this. Actually, let me go in here and make that a little bit bigger. I'll change it to 53. I think I, that looks nice. Yeah, that looks really nice. And I'm happy with this. Now, one additional thing that's totally optional is you can add a button into the menu bar at the top here if you want. I'm not going to, but I'll show you how to do it. So click on the plus sign right there in the middle. Not over here, I click the plus sign right there, then click on button, and then you have a button over here. So we'll just say users can create an account as an example. Then we have a button right there. Now I know what you're gonna say. I don't want it in the center like that, that looks weird. All right, so click your menu item over here, click the little arrow to move left, and then there you go. And then everything is in place. Now we have this little site title element right there. Let's just go ahead and delete that element and there we go so you have the menu item right there in the center and then we have the button over there and the text right there so again i don't really like having a button in the main menu here not my thing so for this design i'm not going to do that but just in case again if you want to know how to do it that's how you do it and one last piece of advice the call to action for the button up top here should be similar to over here. So if like you have like request a quote for this button right there, this button should be request a quote. The two should really match. Anyways, when you're all set, make sure to click save and then click save again. And let's continue. So let's go ahead and add in a welcome message section for our website. So if we take a look at the overall design, I think it looks good. It's really coming together. Now we can finally address the body of the website. So with the body of a website, you have a few different options. Either A, your goal is to make it a visual menu for the website, or B, make it a sales page. Pick one. <laughs> okay. So for example, if I na navigate over here to Miles Beckler, let's take a quick look at his website. He's designed his homepage with an offer section at the top and then a sales page. Sales page sells you on the site over here and then directs you to various aspects of the site. Or you can make it a visual menu. So that's what I kind of tried to accomplish over here. So here's the latest and the greatest blog post. Here are the most popular. There you go. Super simple. So I'm going to make this a visual menu for the website, but I typically do like to kind of maybe lead off with like a welcome message section. So what I mean by that is I kind of introduce people to the site, maybe show a picture of yourself or the team of people behind the site, whatever. Now, what's great about WordPress is that you have access to their block builder. So a few things to note. So first off, if I click over here, this entire thing is a group. So you can group blocks together to make everything a little bit easier to manage. So the reason why you'd want to group things like, see, now I can move this entire block uh, by itself. So I'm not going to, I'm going to get to this section a little bit later. Let's add in that welcome message section. All right. So I'm going to navigate right here. We'll click on the plus sign and let's click on browse all. Now a few things. So you have patterns and blocks. So blocks, you'll have uh, blocks from stackable because I told you to install the stackable plugin. But you, over here is you have a wide range of just different blocks you can add in to design your site. So again, you can play around with this on your own time. We have your paragraphs, heading, code, quotes, pre-formatted tables. Uh, over here, you have social buttons, block quote, columns, design library, and so forth. So like if I click over here for the design library, 
you can open the design library over here. This is why I like Stackable because it comes with a bunch of pre-built designs that you can just click and upload to your site. And some of them are premium designs where you have to pay for Stackable. So you can just sort through this and pick one you like. Anyways, I'm not going to use this. Let's go ahead and row, delete that. And let's go back over here and click on the plus sign. There we go. And we click on browse all. So I'm going to go over here, patterns, and I'm going to come down here to text. And these are pre-made designs we can just click and add it to our website. So one that I really like is right down here, this one. So I just literally just click and add. Done. <laughs> so there we go. So it looks good. And I'm going to switch this image out because I want the like a welcome message. Maybe put yourself if you want. So I'm going to replace this image, open the media library, and I'm going to add in an image of myself over here. You will have to custom design the image you want. So you can use Canva for this. But I just have an image where I made it into a circle. And yeah, it looks good. So again, if you click on the image over here, then you click on your settings over here, you can make any image you add into a circle if you want. So we click over here for the design, default, rounded. So you can achieve the same effect if you don't know how to make a rounded image. And over here we have the settings. So you have the aspect ratio, original, width, full size. Again, you can just play around with that on your own time. And I really like the way that is looking. Okay, so a few things. Now we need to change the copy over here. So I'm going to make this an H2 title tag. So I'm going to get rid of this and we're going to make that into a heading and that's an H2 heading. Now, what's the issue? With designing a website, your body text and your headers should all be not the same size, but like all the H2 title tags, all the H2 headers should be the same size. So there's no reason for this H2 to be this small. So let's click over here. And we'll click on large and we just want to make sure everything kind of matches. So for example, if I click over here, that's your H1 title tag. Let's click over here, see how H2, I kind of like the way that looks. So let's click over here for typography and should give us a reading. So pixels like 40 or so. So let me navigate up top here and click over here for typography. And so that's REM. We can change that to pixels. And the goal is just to make sure everything matches. So I want that to be 40 pixels or so forth. You know, if that makes sense, you don't want this H2 title tag is super small and this H2 title tag is super big. When you're finished with your site design, just make sure everything matches in size. Now, what type of copy should you be writing over here? This is sort of like your one, two punch. So it's like this H2 title tag should kind of back up this. Vlogging, advice, and guides all in one place. Uh, like I could say establish something where like a little bit more credibility over here. Uh, helping or helping vloggers, helping vloggers, helping 1,000 plus vloggers build their channels. I don't know, whatever. And let's go ahead and bold this helping 1000 plus vloggers build their channels and then over here you can just establish some text and again just go into a quick little copy so i like the way this is designed we'll make the text medium so it looks like it matches yeah so it matches the text on the rest of the sites and then over here you just want to have something that establishes again what you do so either you can use like an AI program to whip up some type of quick little paragraph or you could just manually write it yourself. So I could just say something like since, I don't know, 2015, I've been helping XYZ person achieve one, two, three result. I know what the sh struggle is like and I've... I've discovered the secret to vlogging success. I don't know. Let me help you. Let me help you learn more. And then right here with the learn more, you could highlight this, bold it, link. Then we could just link to bloghow.com slash about. There we go. 
then link to the about page. And then you can craft an about page and keep it as simple as that. And that's really it. So over here, if you click on the whole thing, we have two columns and it says stack on mobile. So when people visit the site on a mobile design, the image will stack above the text paragraph. If you don't want that, you can click over here to turn that off. I personally like the way that looks totally up to you. Again, you can play around with it. Then over here, we could have this block over here so we can change the settings over there for the padding as we want. So if we want to move it over a little bit or increase it, you know, just again, just play around with it as you want. And just to make the, uh, the way that structured looks good and just fit a little bit better. So over here, like dimensions, and I can, I'm going to click on padding and now it has padding over here and say, I want to make that a little bit more narrow or wider or whatever. You can just, again, play around with this on your own time. But overall, I think that looks quite nice, gets right to the point and is a good welcome message. And you can continue doing this. So what I mean is like, as your site develops over time, you could consider adding in like what I like to call a selling element. So it'd be like featured in this website, this website, this website. You can do something as simple as that. And all that would require is you to add in like a column block. So let me click above that right there. Actually, let me click over here. So you'd want to do something with like columns. All right, let me X out of that. Click over here. Blocks. There we go. We'll type in. There we go. Columns. And so we click over here for like columns from stackable. We click over here by like the three by three. Click on that again. Then it's like featured in text right there. Then item one, item two, item three. Again, that's totally optional. You don't need to do that at this time. But I definitely would recommend some type of like, I, I call this a welcome message just because it helps establish trust and authority with the site right away. And use this copy right there to help back up the offer over here. Anyways, when you're ready and you're good with your site design, just make sure to save everything. Now let's go ahead and design the blog post section of our website. So let's scroll down right here in this element. So it's set to a query loop, which is what we want. That means it's just going to gather the blog post information automatically without you having to do anything. And over here, you can change the layout as well. So right there, I have post template, which I want to keep. So if you click over here, you can switch things around, but I would just leave it as it is. You can change things to a uh, list layout over here or a grid layout. I like masonry grid layout. Now, if we click over here for the settings, it's set to three columns. What does that mean? It means it's going to show blog post, blog post, blog post, like one, two, three. And really that simple. So the thing we need to do is we need to add in blog posts. So right now we only have one called hello world over here. And so if we navigate to our post page, our post section, we have hello world right there. And so this is what's populating everything. So you see this box right there, this gray box, that's your feature image. So we can add in a feature image with the blog post. So over here, this is the block and this is the post. And this is where you kind of just write content and publish stuff. So you write your blog post. Then when you're ready, you can click on update or publish. Over here, you have the template that you're using. So right now we have a default template, which you want to keep. And you also have a blank template with this theme. A blank template is good because it'll literally be a, just a blank page. And that's ideal for creating some type of landing page or sales page where you can just custom design with the block builder. So you just want to leave it as default template because we want, we're want we creating a single post. It's literally called a single post. Leave it as is. When you navigate down here, you have your categories. So all blog posts must be categorized in a category. And you want categories that make sense for your website. So you don't want uncategorized. You don't want thoughts. Like, that's not a category. Like, what's your site about? So this is about vlogging. So it should be like cameras, camera gear, vlogging tips. Things like that are categories. Let me close on that. All right, so we have tags over here. Tags are ideal if you're talking about a very specific aspect that doesn't warrant its own category. So maybe like I'm talking a lot about vlogging cameras, but uh, I briefly mentioned like Canon cameras sometimes. So I'll leave a tag as like Canon and like that's only for like maybe three to six posts will be tagged as Canon, that type of thing. And then over here is the feature image. So the image that you upload here, so you click over here, media library, select an image. That's what's going to appear over there. So this is how you add in a feature image with your website. 
Over here, you have your excerpt, which is an optional thing. Excerpt means this little section right there, welcome to WordPress, is your first post, blah, blah, blah. You can change it by editing it over here. Now, if I navigate up top here, we're gonna click over here. This is rank math. And this is how I definitely recommend you structure and design your blog post for SEO. So you click over here to edit the snippet. Now over here, we have the blog post title up top there. So you can kind of delete this. You have the permalink, then the description right there. And the description that you put in here will override everything else and will appear right over there. If that makes sense. So that's what you want to do. All right, so let me click the X over here and let's click back over here and bring this up to settings. Now, one little thing over here, we see the URL. So it's the website slash date. All right, so dates are one of the worst URL structure for a website. With a blog, you either wanna have it be slash blog, slash post title, slash category, slash post title, or just slash post title. So how do you change this? So very simple, let's navigate over here back to our WordPress dashboard. And we're gonna navigate down here for the settings. Then you wanna navigate over here to where it says permalinks. And we wanna change this over here. So we want we don't want day and name, month and name. We just want post name, keep it as simple as that. Now, if you wanna add in more, like I wanna have categories, then you can click over here for categories, it automatically adds it in as needed. So again, totally up to you. I personally like post names. So this is the way I think of it. Post name is ideal if you're going to be creating a site that has a thousand blog posts max. So if you think your website's gonna top out a thousand blog posts max, then post title is totally fine. Category slash post title is ideal if you're going to be building a massive website that has a bunch of different categories and a lot of blog posts in each of those categories. So again, just really depends on what you're doing. But again, there's no right answer to this. The, the wrong answer is to do something like plain or to have dates. Dates are the worst unless you're creating a news website. If you're creating a news website and you have time sensitive content, then dates are totally fine. If that's not you, in general, for most people, just go with post name. When you're ready, navigate down here, click on save changes. Fantastic. So now let's navigate over here and let me reload the post page and you'll see that the date is gone and now it's just the post title. Anyways, I'm going to add a bunch of blog posts so you can kind of see how this looks and then we can edit and design this element. All right. So I went ahead and published six example blog posts right over here and put them in different categories. Now let's take a look at the site design. So I have the full site editor open and let's navigate down to our blog post section. And this is looking quite nice. Now, how do we edit and change a few things over here? Now, first off, this is kind of the default text that comes with this 2023 theme. So you can change this or keep this. I actually like having this. I'm just going to change this and put this as newest and X or semicolon <laughs> there we go boom and just keep it like that and now i'm going to click over here and select the entire block and now if i want to change a few things again you can navigate over here to your settings and change the columns maybe i want to make this four or two keep it as three if you want i like three i think it looks the best navigate over here to the styles and then you can change the color of the text if you want so we can change the text to like a light gray like that which I actually think looks good. Maybe not that light gray, but I do kind of like maybe making the excerpt text just a little bit lighter, just a pinch lighter than uh, full on black. You can add a background color if you want, which I think looks bad. So I'm not going to do that. And there you go. So if you want to change the title as well, we can click over here and you can navigate over this and select this block. Then you can just change this to H2, H3, whatever you want. Now, if you open up the settings, we have this specific block selected. And so we can navigate over here for styles. If I navigate down here, appearance, and maybe I want this to be bold, just normal. And I think that looks good and everything else is adjusted. So you don't have to do this manually. And so let's go ahead and do this one right again, highlight that. And I want this text to be centered, align text center. And yeah, that looks really nice. Now we have the excerpt over here. We click over here for the settings number of words 55 so if you want this to show less or more you can adjust this as you like 
honestly, you should be writing custom excerpts for each one of these blog posts that you publish on your website. So how do you do that? What is powering this section right there? Again, like I mentioned, let's open up this GoPro. First iPhone blogging, just a test post I have. So navigate down here is where the excerpt is, and this is where you can write this in. And so normally this should be like one to two sentences. It should be a quick little explanation of what the post is, and it really should be the similar kind of content that you have over here for the edit snippet. So again, for I don't want to go too fast, let me X out of that. Let's click over here for the square again. All right, so it's in categories. That's the feature image. Now, the excerpt. So the goal of the excerpt is just to explain to people in search engines what the blog post is about. That's all you have to put in here, like one to two sentences. So let's take a quick look over here to my site. We navigate down here. Here's a quick little excerpt. So, and same with this, literally just a sentence. So I would write an excerpt over here, like this, like is the Go Pro or is the GoPro or the iPhone best for blogging? Come find out in this detailed review or detailed comparison, whatever. Okay, so we'll take that. I'll take this little piece of text right there. I'll copy that. So I'll navigate over here to go to Rank Math. This is our SEO plugin. And we navigate up top here, edit the snippet. And so we have over here the post title. And we don't need this little dash right there, but it has the site name. So if you have a site name for the site, it'll appear right there. Now the excerpt goes here. So we can post that in right there. Then we can save. So that's the permalink and that's the site title. So we can change this to like Go Pro versus iPhone 4 blogging. Keep it like that. And then let's click on update. And then let's take a quick look at the site design again. We click on save and click on save. There we go. And let me reload the editor. Okay, and we navigate down here and you can see that the text has been updated. And this is really what you want to have like two like two sentences, one, two, three sentences max. You don't want like a little text paragraph like that. And that's really it. And so when you publish pieces of content on your site, that's what I would do. Now, again, if we select the whole box right there, we have a bunch of different settings that we can change. So align, and then we click over here for the post template, columns, like I would, wouldn't really touch anything over here. Now, right here, it's displaying six things. So like, how do I change that? What if I want to have it display more than six items. Well, because it's already built in as a query loop, where you need to go for that is you need to navigate back to your WordPress dashboard. You need to navigate down here and go to writing. Or is it under general? I always forget this. Actually, it's under reading. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So homepage displays your latest post, whatever, but like blog posts shows at most six, you can change this to whatever you want. I'd keep it again, common sense. If I'm using, if you're using like a three by three layout, like one, two, three, one, two, three, then you want to go like three, six, nine, whatever. So if I change this, like blog pages show at most three posts, we'll change that. I'll click over here to save. I'll close out of this and then we'll take a quick look at the editor and it should be only displaying three blog posts. And let's navigate down here. There you go. One, two, three. So that's where you can change how many things, how many items are displayed. I would recommend probably six or nine. I do like the way six looks, so I'm going to keep it as is like that. And that's really it for setting up your blog post section on the homepage. I think this looks quite nice. And one additional little thing over here, you just want to adjust a few more items. So you see this read more text. Like, how do I change that? Like, I don't see, like, click on it. You can just type in whatever you want. Read more. There you go. Simple as that. And if you want to, you can bold this over here as you want. And so we can highlight the whole text right there. I'll click on bold. There you go. And you don't have to have it. If you don't want it, you can just delete it. Then you have the date right down there totally up to you if you want to display the date. If you don't want dates displayed on the homepage, which I typically don't like, you just click over here, click on delete, and it goes away. And over here, I'd keep the new and older posts. Again, 
if you like it, you can keep it. If you don't like it, you can just go ahead and delete that. But I think that it's quite useful. So the person can visit your site, then they can cycle through older and newer posts as needed. Again, it's your site, totally up to you. Anyways, when you're ready, go ahead and click save and let's continue on. Adding in a final call to action for our website. So at the very top of the site, we have this offer section right here. We have a button where you can link to something like request a quote, consultation, watch our masterclass, download our free giveaway whatever. Then you want to link to a dedicated squeeze page for said offer. Then we have the site as kind of like a visual menu, like the blog post section right there, what the site's about. And right down here, right above the footer, we can have a final call to action to do something, which is a very high converting spot. So if you look at something like, uh, we'll take a look at backlink over here. There's a reason why they have the opt-in form right above the footer. This is a surprisingly high converting spot on a website at the very bottom of a blog post and at the very bottom of the page right above the footer. And we can just incorporate something ourselves as we want. So I actually kind of like this base template right here. I wouldn't have a rhetorical question like uh, any book recommendations, but maybe I'm offering like consultations of some type. So get your vlogging channel reviewed and then we can have copy over here actually let me back out of that okay there we go okay now we can have some copy right here so i offer a or we can say like from xyz to one two three i understand what it takes to build a logging channel. Let me just change that up top here. And then benefit one, benefit two, benefit three, whatever. Just have sales copy going on right over here. And then don't have get in touch. Make it like uh, consultation or whatever. Book your consultation. Book your consultation. Make an offer to the end visitor. So I'd probably create like maybe a three sentence paragraph right there, then a couple different bullet points that lead into the button. Over here, we could play around with like an image. So if I click over here, I'll type in image and let me upload an image. And I'm going to upload this one right there. And I just crafted this with Canva, nothing fancy. I mean, change that from three G's to one G. There we go. And let's resize this down a little bit and center this over there. And it looks nice. So let me highlight the text over here. So it matches the rest of the H2 title tag. And that looks good. So or we can have this over here. Blogging console. Blogging consultations. There we go. Take that, whatever. You get the idea. So build copy over here. Maybe have an image over here. You can play around with this as you see fit. If you don't like the little black button right there, you just click on it and click over here to delete. You can play around the image size so everything kind of matches. And overall, that looks quite nice. So again, you have to build out the copy a little bit better. But again, or if you don't like this section at all, you just go ahead and delete it. <laughs> So we just have the, post, have the blog post section, then the footer, and that works well too. Now, some other ideas that you could add in over here, you click on the plus sign, click on browse, and then you have a bunch of pre-built patterns. So for example, we have like the call to action uh, offer section right there that we can add in. So we can click on that and you can have this call to action where you can then jump in and change the copy over here, change the color scheme, change, you know, again, you just have to use this element over here. We can change the text color and change the background. But again, if you want like a, just a big box at the very bottom right there, you can go ahead and do that. And you, again, wide range of options. So you have a bunch of different patterns over here and blocks. So over here, we have the call to action section right there too from Stackable, which I quite like. And Stackable again has this design library, which is very helpful, which is why I like Stackable. So we can open up the design library. Just give it a second to load. 
All right, let me click over here for wireframes. So wireframes are all free, and these are just like pre-made templates that you can just click and add to your site UI kits over here, kind of pre-made designs you can add into your site as well, and block designs, block designs. And then over here, you have a bunch of different offers sections that you can add in. So call to action over there. So we have a bunch of different text and images that you can play around with or jump over here for wireframes, like this call to action section. So like wireframes for a call to action, there we go. I want to add this one in. Just click on it. And there you go. And you can edit the text as you want. Just to give you some ideas. It's your site. You can do whatever you want. But I like having the I like the idea of having like an offer section right above the footer. But again, if you don't like this, you don't have to add this in. But just giving you some ideas from a design perspective of what you can continue adding onto your site to make it more complete and comprehensive. So I went ahead and designed the final call to action section just a little bit more. So just let me show you what I came up with really quick. Now this was generated with chat GBT. So you could just do that or write the copy yourself, but I definitely recommend a little paragraph, then bullet points and a little paragraph, then book your consultation. The emoji, you get that from just Googling like backhand index pointing down, whatever, click on copy, then you can copy and paste the emoji right to there. And then to book your consultation, you'd want to link that to something else. And then over here, just highlighted the text using the highlight feature that comes with WordPress. Then this is very helpful right there. This is a separator. So let me just go ahead and remove that. And then the, by the uh, design of the site we have already, we have like a little separator going on up here. So you want to mouse over like right underneath. You'll see the block option right there. There we go. Okay. Then we want to type in separator. Now with Stackable, Stackable comes with a wide range of separators that we can use. And so you click over here. This is the separator where it's kind of a wavy thing. Click over there and then click on style that we have selected over there. Click on separator. Then here are a bunch of different options that you can use for your site. So if I click over there, have this design or that design, whatever you want. So maybe I'll keep it as rounded. And again, you just play around with this on your own time. So you have a bunch of advanced settings over there and styles and colors, and you can change it to dark and you can flip it horizontally, flip it vertically. You can add in a background image if you want right there or a video if you want. You can change the layout over here with different minimum heights. And you know, again, just you can play around with this on your own time but in general this is like what you can kind of add in to the site and this is very helpful because you know the whole body design over here is white so it helps separate everything just a little bit and help separate this bottom section from the rest of the website adding and editing the footer of our website so the home page is pretty much done and the final thing that we need to add in is the footer. So by default, this is what the footer looks like, probably powered by WordPress and the site title will be over there, but I delete the site title. Anyways, it works the same way as the header section. So you click over here for the purple, then you click on the, di the dots right there, one, two, three dots. Then you want to click on replace footer. Then here you go. You have a bunch of different footers you that you can select and edit from. So I like this one right here, full width, footer, background color. You can change the color, you can change the amount of columns, whatever, but I like this very useful click over there for everything to load and looks good. And so from here we can just edit and adjust as we need to. Let's get started editing and designing the footer. And I'm going to share with you a couple different options that you have. So first off to change the background color is very simple. Just click anywhere in the black area to select the footer and then navigate up top there to settings. Now, okay. So I have the block still selected. Let me click it again. There we go. Okay, so see I clicked over here, pops up. Let me click on styles and now we have the background color right there. I'll select this and I'll change this to say blue. There we go, X out of this, looks good. Okay, so I like this design over here and right now the way this is set up, it's linking to Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can just change these to link to whatever you want. So if you want to make this like a secondary menu so I can change Facebook, I'll backspace out of this and just write uh, about and then change Instagram, I'll change this to contact and the Twitter, I'll backspace that resources and then we'll type in blog and just make sure to click on this and then 
click on the link to unlink each one of these items. There we go. And then I'll change this instead of follow us, I'll change this to say company. And now you have text links right down there. Now you do have to highlight the text and then click the link and then you can link to whatever you want. So this is a useful way to kind of manually input the pages that you want to link to without linking to everything. And so over here, you see the same type of thing where you have your navigation. Now, if you like the way this is set up already out of the box and you don't need to touch this, but please note that if you adjust the navigation items here, it does affect navigation items up top there. So if you don't want to do that and you want to add in additional pages into your footer, which I do recommend that maybe don't fit in your main menu, then this is where you can do it. So first off, you're going to have to delete this box. So let me click on delete and I'll change this to, I don't know, info. Okay. So now just type in the words that you want to have down here. So, or the links, to the page that you want to have down here. So I have shipping returns, refunds, and we'll say affiliates. And then we're going to highlight the, all the text right here. And I want to center the text. So align text, align center. You can see that everything's still separated. So we want to group this together. There we go. So now it's the same type of thing over here, but there's still a bit of a gap. So you need to navigate over here to the settings and then navigate over here to the styles. Scroll down. Then the block spacing right there is where you kind of play around with things. So you just want to eyeball it and make sure everything matches. So you just want to two, three, four, maybe five, six, that great. Looks like eight or maybe nine. Uh, just eyeball. There we go. 10. Perfect. So now everything kind of matches up. So it looks good. So maybe I'll take that. We'll bold that company. I'll bold that. So it's like a little bit of a title over here. I want to add in the logo. So I'll hit the enter button, create a new space plus sign, literally type in logo site logo done. And I want to move that up and put that right there. And that looks good overall. So maybe I want to center that logo align center looks nice. Okay. And we don't really need this word that says location. And then we want to have like a, maybe a quick description of what the website is about. So maybe logging advice and guides made easy, whatever. All right. And then we can add in social media links. So you click, uh, press the plus sign. <laughs> okay. And then type in social icons. So just type an SO should pop up with social icons right there. And there you go. So click plus to add. What does that mean? Literally click plus to add. So I want to say maybe Facebook. Okay. And then I want to add in something else. We'll say YouTube. Okay, great. And another one, I don't know, Instagram, Instagram. Good. Now you do need to click the icon and then you need to type in the address. So if I just type in Instagram.com, boom. Now it's a bright color right there. And same with this link as well, YouTube.com and Facebook.com, boom, done. Looks good. So let's go ahead and center these items right there. So justify items center. And then over here with the design, this is where you can kind of change everything. So logos only, little shape if I want, default, I can change the icon color to like maybe just black or keep it as white or default, whatever I want or icon background, change the icon background to black. So it blends into the site. Totally up to you. You can play around with this and pick a design that you really like. And finally, let's change this proudly powered by WordPress. So I do like having text at the bottom here, but this is more useful to have like the copyright of the website. So I should be copy, write, blog, how then 20 XX, the date, then a page separator, get rid of that page separator. And then, uh, all right. So let me unlink this. So it stops doing that. Then we want to add in maybe like the privacy. All right. This is very annoying. Let me click away from that. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. So now I have privacy, maybe another page separator terms. And there you go. Keep it as simple as that. And this is where your privacy policy terms of use, that type of page goes. So then we can change the color as well if you want, which I do suggest maybe, maybe like a nice gray, 
maybe like a lighter gray so it doesn't stand out as much. So change it just, uh, again, yeah, just play around with it, see how it looks, and yeah, something like that. So that looks good overall. So you have the logo over there, what the site's about, social media links, company, info, about, whatever, three to five links, three to five links, then the copyright of the website, then a link to the privacy policy terms of use page. Now again, this is just text, you have to highlight this, then click the link button over here, then type in your privacy policy page and your terms of use page, which you do need to create. But anyways, that's how you edit and adjust the footer. Editing and designing your individual blog posts. By now, the site design is coming together and I think our homepage is done. You should at this point in time have a good idea about how to best design your website and how this theme works. Now, a few more things that we need to change and adjust are our individual pages and our blog posts. So if I take a look at the site, so this is blogout.com slash blog, this is a page. So blog is a page, about's a page, contacts a page, resources is a page. Then you have your individual blog posts. And so this is one of my individual blog posts on this site. And so this template needs to be designed and your page template needs to be designed. So how do you do that? So we navigate over here to the full site editor. And you want to navigate down here to templates. So within templates, single post is what controls your individual blog posts. And then your pages are what control all your pages on your site. So again, let me just open up and open up the dashboard over here just so you know what I'm talking about. So within WordPress, you have pages and you have posts. And so these two templates you do need to design. Don't worry, really simple and easy. Okay. So let's begin with designing the individual blog post. So let's click over here for single post and let's click in and this is your design. So a lot of things that we could do up top here. This is what I recommend for this type of theme. So first off, you wanna click the top over here. You wanna click on the dots and then you wanna replace the header. So we click on replace the header. Then you have a bunch of different options. We have the homepage. Do you want that? If you want that, you could go ahead and add it. But I personally go with like this type of design over here, full width header and hero image. And just because it puts in the logo and the menu items in the correct spot, then the image right here, we don't need because we already have a featured image and just delete that. And then there you go. You have the logo and everything's in place. Looks great. Looks really nice. If you want to change the background color on this, you can do so by clicking this, then clicking over here for the settings and then boom, click on that background, then whatever color you want. Simple as that. And if you want to change the color items right there, same thing over here. So you click on it. So it's the whole menu item selected. Then you click on text and then we click on say white. And if you want to make that bold, well, then you got to kind of just, I, this is what I like to do. Just highlight it, bold, highlight it, bold. Now, again, this is own individual template, so it won't affect the homepage. So you don't need to worry about that. Uh, so again, it's up to you, but again, don't, Anything you delete in this navigation menu, this is your, your primary navigation, will affect the homepage. Now, with in regards to site design, you do want to have the same navigation that you do have, have on the homepage for uh, just good, proper user experience. And there you go. So you can have it as simple as that. It looks good with the logo and colored uh, header, colored menu item at the top. Again, totally up to you, however you want to design this. Or maybe you just want this to be pure white. You can go ahead and do that. All right, so let me go ahead and click on save and click on save over here. And let's reload this, see how this looks right over here. And there we go. So looking nice. Now we have our featured image right there. So when you click into here, you have a bunch of different settings. So we click over here for the settings. You have the overlay. So if you don't want overlay, you want it to be like maybe a pinch dark or maybe no overlay whatsoever. There you go. You just play around with this. You want a duotone. So everything that you upload has its own color whatever. <laughs> it's up to you. So you can play around with this. Now, if you don't want a featured image at all, you can just go over here and just delete. And this just removes this big image at the very top of your blog post. What I like to do personally with the way I design is I don't like using featured images on the blog post when it's opened up. I use featured images for like the individual like blog roll section of the sites like this. But when you open up and, you know, open up the blog post, I don't want some giant image. So I'm good with this, like the way this is structured. So again, your site, up to you. So anyways, you have a bunch of different options that you can play around with. So for example, like I don't want the 
image touching the menu at the top right there. So you can just navigate over here for padding and then you can make the image a little bit not as wide over there. And you can aspect ratio, you can change the square four by three. Uh, you can add in a border if you want as well. So you have a bunch of different options. You can link to the settings page over there. So again, you can kind of play around with this on your own time, the way you want this to appear on your site and the way this is works and it's laid out. So again, you have a bunch of different uh, settings over here with the aspect ratio, the border radius and so forth. So you can just play around with that. So again, totally up to you. Let me go ahead and click on save and let's reload the site. And yeah, that's looking much better. So I like that, the way that that's laid out at the very top right there. Uh, uh, all right, so let me click over here and just make sure there's no other additional settings. So filters, dimensions, margin, aspect ratio. Yeah, looks good overall. Okay, so now you have your blog post title right there and let's navigate down. So a few things over here. So we, the way this is structured is that it tends to put the author in the categories and the not in the footer but like at the bottom of the blog post and tags over there and i have no idea why there's tag tag like why there's two so with this if you like it you can just leave it as is and then your personal information that you use to publish everything will be down here the date by the person tags like that type of thing so if you're like what are categories and tags so let me just navigate back to the dashboard over here when you blog everything has to be categorized in a category required absolutely 100 percent in a category and your categories for your site should be things that are relevant to like what you're talking about so like it, uh, this is a camera site so it's a vlogging site so it should be like vlogging tips and vlogging cameras gear uh youtube tips like things like that those are categories not thoughts feelings emotions uncategorized like <laughs> you don't want that and then tags are optional so tags are typically for things that are like a step deeper and more niche specific. So like a tag for a, this type of site, like a, a site I'm vlogging would be Canon. You know, maybe I'm talking about just Canon cameras and I'm going to have maybe max eight blog posts talking about Canon cameras. That's when you'd want to use like a tag. When you have like things that are like three to eight posts within a tag, this is kind of like when you want to use a tag. If you're going to be using a category, that's something where you're going to have like 40, 50, 100 blog posts in a category. Okay, so anyways, that's how you kind of make that decision to whether or not to use uh, tags. Let me jump over here. So if you don't like this, like I personally like having the information at the top right there, like by the author and the category and all that, you can totally do that. So you'd have to like kind of delete all this. So let's go ahead and delete and delete and delete. There we go. And right up top here, hit the title, hit enter. And then I would go with something like maybe a column. So it would have been column, boom, maybe a 50-50 or 33-60, whatever you want. So let's click over here and then I'll type in the author and then post author, boom. And then write byline. You could write byline like, write byline would be like written by, get that right there. It's if you want. Uh, so that anyways, the post author would come up there. So it's like uh, written by post offer, well, post author. There you go. And click over here, and then you can type in the category, and then select category and category suffix over there. We click on save, save again, and then navigate over here to the blog post. Let's reload this, and then you have the uh, information written by the person, and then the uh, category that the blog post is put in. And of course, let me close out of this and close out of this and close out of this. <laughs> so over here, things like this, if you don't like the title being thin like that, you could always click over here for the settings and just adjust everything. So you want to change the text background. You might change the appearance so it's like bold and change the font size, maybe extra large or XXL. Like, you know, again, you can just play around with that. Then right down here, you have your comment section. So if you want comments on your site, there's a couple different ways you could do this. So you could either just completely delete this site or sorry, delete this comment section. And that turns off comments on all your blog posts forever. So you don't have to worry about comments. Again, if you want to add it back in, see how it says comments, then all you have to do is come to the block editor, type that in and then type in 
comments, and then you can just add it back in if you want. Uh, within your WordPress settings over here, you have your settings and then you have your discussion over here. Over here, you can also turn off comments as well. So you have a lot more details over here. So like, uh, like automatically close comments on blog posts older than 14 days, common author must fill out their name and email. Again, you can play around with these settings over here as you want. I personally don't use comments. I don't like comments. I don't find them that useful for, I like comments on YouTube, but not on a blog post. Uh, again, it's your website, your decision. So I'm just going to leave this as is. And overall, this looks really nice. Let me click on save. And let me close out of this and close out of this right here. Let's reload this. Boom. All right. <laughs> that's a little big. Okay. That's way too big. <laughs> Let's change that. That's getting a little silly. All right. So we'll just make that uh, <clears throat> extra large. Actually, let me click over here. And I'll change this to, yeah, REM's fine. We'll click, make that a little bit bigger. Yeah, like that. Good. Okay, so that's good. So we have the featured image up top there. And all right, so color overlay, it's fine. All right, so anyways, overall, this is looking quite nice. And of course, if you just want to add in additional aspects to your site, you can just mouse over the section over here. Let me close out of this. So like if you want a, say, a call to action at the very bottom of every single blog post, again, you have your block editor. So you can go over here for patterns, call to action. You can add in one of these call to actions over here, or you can use like stackable over here. So it's like the design library, open the design library. And then you can add in like a UI kit or a wireframe kit and have some type of like template sitting at the very bottom of every single blog post if you want. Again, up to you. You don't have to do that. You can just leave it very uh, clean and simple. I, I like my blog post with a title and then I like to edit the individual blog post in the blog post uh, editor. Anyways, now we go past the comments. Then we have our footer down here. So this footer needs to be swapped out for our footer. So to do that, it's very simple replace footer and our footer th that we designed is right there. Just click it. Done. Simple as that. Click over here for save, save. And there you go. So now you have a nice good design with the logo and the menu item and featured image that you can remove and your individual blog post that looks good, the comment section and the footer for the website. Designing the page template for our website. So we already touched on the individual blog post pages. So now we have like a blog page, about page, contact page, resource page, and any page you want to add into your website going forward. So anyways, navigate over here for pages and click on that. And this is the page templates over here. And for this structure, what I personally would do is the same thing. I'd click up top here, click on little dots over there, replace the header. And then I would probably choose this header or choose the header that we already designed for the blog post pages. I would probably remove the featured image for the pages, not for the blog posts and keep it as, and then take away the comment section because this is a page. So let me go ahead and delete that and then navigate down here, click on that, replace footer, choose our footer and as simple as that. And so I would keep it like this. Personally, for all my pages, for the blog page, about contact resources page, because then when you have your pages opened up, then you can custom design each page going forward as you like. So let's take a quick look. So we have our pages over here. Let me open up this. And then we have our blog section, for example. And then we have like, we'll take the about page. So for your individual blog page, what you could do is click over here for the plus sign. And actually, let me click on that to open up the side right there. So click on the plus sign right there. We click on browse all. And you can type in either blog, and you'll have a bunch of different options over here. Like here we go, like with these different types of designs that you want. Or you can type in posts. Then you have your post list, and then these other pre-made templates that you can add in or posts over here. And then you could just have your blog role archive over here. Okay. And so then you want, again, that's why you want like a very nice, simple template. That's not too complicated with the header at the top, the footer, then the content, just very simple that you can edit and custom design everything. So for example, like this is the about page. Actually, let me go ahead and save this. And let me go ahead and add in like a blog archive section right there. So let me click over here for that and then I'll type in blog. 
and or actually let me type in posts there we go okay so then we have a bunch of different options you have a grid layout standard uh like i can click on this one right there and so there you go simple as that we'll click on update then we can view the page now and then template right there and again you can develop this and custom design this section with a little bit more detail if you want or if you don't like the way this looks you can just delete it and replace it with something else and so forth and then you have your about page over here and again you just use the custom blocks editor to design everything that you want so again if you look at like what i actually do i keep things simple like the about page it's just the h1 title tag then it's just a paragraph then an image it's <laughs> simple okay and i do that just by using the block editor within here so you have a bunch of different options about how complicated you want to make everything with the about page resources contact things you want to add into your site over here so again like always you can use like patterns uh, we click over here for featured patterns but i just want to add this in right there for the about page and custom design this thing that make change the color and add my own images of me or whatever the site's about you have that flexibility with this design um uh, back out of that one okay or we can navigate over here for images so we can see type in image and then <clears throat> we can go to our media library and then i'll select uh we'll select this image right here okay then over here you have the aspect ratio original standard classic wide uh again you can just play around with everything as you want so we'll type in cover we can have like a cover image so media library we'll select this one again boom and then we have the uh design over here that we can play around with so as an example just let me show you some things that you could consider doing so in general i would just write tags and add in images and keep it very simple but Again, you have the act you have access to the block editor, so you can add in a bunch of blocks as you like. So if I click over here for like patterns, we have the header right there. I can select the header for the website. We can navigate over here and we can just delete this section right there. And then we have a nice big image on the about page that we want. So if we want to have this over here. So let me go ahead and click on update. And let me open up the page over here. So if you want to do something like this, you can, you do have access to this. I don't recommend doing this, but if you want to do this, you can, if you want to get rid of the header section over here, you also have your page template where you can click over here. Then you can click over here for default template. Then you can select blank and blank literally means a blank. So it's a completely blank template template. <laughs> so you can customize the page and design as you want so right now we just have this over there and i like blank because it automatically gets rid of the uh, title section as well so for example if i want to get rid of that and we'll just click on browse patterns again headers and then i want to select this header for example and it's the template's still on blank and then let's reload this then we have a nice design so you can customize the look and feel of each page individually this way if you want so let me back out of all this click over here for browse patterns again headers again and then we can select the header that we're using for the home page as an example which is this one right there and then you can just custom design this to your liking so you click over here for the background image click over here for the block <clears throat> then you need to like match it to the home page a little bit so like we'll turn down the opacity so it's like 10 over here and then you can have uh text over here that you can add in and customize the text for the about page so like how would i do that so you can kind of minimize this over here then click on the plus sign right there paragraph and then you have your paragraph right here so about this websites you can't really see it because it's right down there we'll highlight that let me highlight that again right there click on that paragraph and we want to change that to say a heading and then we want to center it and then fix the writing there we go about this website then i want to change the color so it's white foam over there and it's the title of the about page and there we go and we'll bold it as well and then you can just do the same thing that we did on the home on the home page in the beginning of the tutorial where you can edit everything and adjust and really that's how you can kind of add in and if you want to have a custom design for your individual pages 
that's how you can go about doing it. You can do this for the blog page. You can do this for uh, all the all the pages on your site as you like. If you don't want to say have a colored uh, main menu at the top, so let me open up this. So for the vlogging page, for sorry, for the blog page, <laughs> vlogging, blogging for the blog page. I went ahead and added like a quick little call to action at the top here and then like a little quick little blog roll right there. So you could do that. So again, this is just an alternative way to design your site. If you want to have this type of header for your pages and then have the blogging experience be like this with the blue. Again, it's your site up to you. I'm just trying to give you a bunch of different options to design your site. So again, like call to action right there, then our blog roll right down there. And so that's why people like WordPress because it's quite flexible once you understand what you're doing and how to use the block editor to edit and design your site. On page SEO for your blog posts and pages. So there's a few things we need to do, not too long, but at the top right there, you do want to add in SEO title for the website as well as your individual pages and blog posts. So if we take a look at my site right there, we have the title and then a title description. And that's how you, in general, you want to structure your homepage, the name of the website, then what the website's about, and then a meta description right underneath. So how do we do that? Very simple. So we navigate to our WordPress dashboard. We have Rank Math SEO installed. You want to click on Titles and Meta, and then the homepage title. So you click on Homepage right there. Then we can type in the homepage title. So I'll type in something like Vlog How, then a page separator, Vlogging, Advice, and guides there we go and then a meta description and again the meta description appears here so that's what you type in so it really should just be one quick little sentence that describes the site so anyways let me go ahead and click on save changes there we go and if we take a look at the site over here we'll reload it then there you go and really that simple so anyways, now that we have that sorted, you can also do the same thing for your author pages if you're going to have a multi-author page. And right over here, you have your post types, and post types and pages. I like to do this individually per blog post. So if we have an example blog post open over here, to edit the meta description, you click on the icon that's over here. See how it says 9 out of 10? And so this is rank math over here. And then you can put in your focus keyword there and it'll give you like a ranking and so forth. But to edit the metadata, you click on edit snippet. Then over here, you type everything in. So I have GoPro for iPhone, the name of the blog post. Then there's still room. See how it says it's green over here? So for example, if I get rid of that, it's kind of like, eh, it could be a little bit longer. Then you want to have page separator, then name of the website. So again, it just depends on how long your title is for your blog post. If it fits and it's green, then you don't need the site title. If it doesn't fit and it's not green, so like it's like orange still, then maybe you want to put in the site title. And then a description of what the blog post is like. And then just do the same thing for your pages. So like when you open up your pages over here, you have the same exact option. So if I click over here for contact, I click over here, then edit the snippet. And you have to do this for this individual page. So contact us today. Page separator, vlog out. There you go. Done. And X out of that and update that. And so whenever you publish a blog post or a page, you just want to make sure to edit the metadata as needed. And last, just make sure everything looks good on a mobile device. So you literally should go to your phone and type in your website and just make sure it looks correct. You can also check the mobile design by clicking on the icon up top there, changing this from desktop and change it to mobile. And then just go through the site and make sure everything looks good and is okay. There's appropriate padding, nothing's weird. It really should just look good out of the proverbial box because this is a responsive theme. So check the menu item, for example, that looks great over there. If you want to change the background, which I have been asked how to do that before, very simple. You have your menu selected like this. Let me click over there. There we go. And then click on settings. Then we navigate over here, then sub menu and overlay background is how you change that. So for example, if I click down black, then we switch it back to mobile over here. Then we change the background to black. So again, just run through your site, make sure everything looks good. Nothing's weird. And then when you're finally done with the website, Make sure to navigate back to your WordPress dashboard and activate a caching plugin of your choice. With DreamHost, by default, it comes with WP Super Cache. So a cache just helps your website load more quickly for the end visitor and provides an overall good user experience. 
Anyways, that is it for this tutorial. Okay everyone, that's it for this tutorial video on how to create a website with the 2023 theme. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. If you did, consider subscribing and hit that like button. My name is David, thank you very much for watching and have a great day. Bye bye.